Hey guys, and welcome back to Taylor Tech. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little project for my wife. Um, she has a third generation iPod, which was her first iPod that she's lo uh, you know, super proud of and loves it. But unfortunately, the battery has died in it. Now, um, the batteries for these things are not that expensive. You know, I was able to get one for like 13 bucks online that supposedly came with all the tools you need to disassemble the iPod and uh, replace the battery. Uh, the only problem is the iPod is a sealed unit, so it's not the easiest thing to get into. Um, this is not like, you know, taking apart a computer case or something like that to replace uh, a, a component simply because there's, you know, there's no screws, that kind of thing. Um, so I did some research on how to take this thing apart, and, uh, you know, it looked simple enough, so we're going to do it together. Uh, yeah, and let's see how this goes. All right. <laughs> So the first thing that I discovered as I was looking at how to do this is um, there's actually only one way to open this guy. There's a wire or ribbon wire that runs from the screen to the back of the iPod on this side. So you actually can't open it from this side. Um, the only side you can open it from is the right hand side as you're looking at the iPod. So the first step is to take your case removal tool and kind of wedge it in there between the uh, metal body and the plastic, there you go. And uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to release these clips. So once you get it in there, you can kind of slide it along. You'll see how I'm doing it. I'm not taking it out and redoing it. I'm just sliding it, and that loosens all those clips. Uh, it'll kind of scuff up your tool, but these are really, that's fine. It's not a big deal. All right. So something that's important when you're doing these kinds of projects is to go slowly and be gentle. You know, you never want to get in a hurry and force something and wish you hadn't forced it later because uh, plastic clips cannot be replaced. All right. So we got the clips on this side. There were two clips on the bottom. And now she opens right up. So there's that ribbon wire we were talking about. Now, to keep from damaging it, what we're actually going to do is disconnect it. So we can just take this half of the iPod off completely. There you go. Now that's your switch there and headphone plug. Now this is the actual physical hard drive. That's right. These old iPods actually have what is essentially a laptop hard drive in them. And it's also connected by a little ribbon cable. Let's see if we can remove this guy. and all of his padding. Okay, it plugs in right there. All right, so that's kind of got some like gooey padding on it. All right, now we're down to the logic board and the old battery that needs to be replaced. And actually, you can see that battery is quite swollen. It's not good. All right, so one trick I learned about while I was researching this is that the wires for the battery are always wrapped underneath the logic board on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a Torx, I think it's a T1. It's T6. No, let's try it. It's a T6. Let's see if that's the right size. Yep, T6. We're going to take this screw out here so that we can gently raise the logic board on this side to get that wire out from around it. You want to be careful. This is just a little thin strip of uh, PCB board. So you want to be careful lifting that wire out. You don't want to put too much tension on that. There you go. And the old battery, which is slightly swollen, is out. So now here's the new replacement battery. We're going to put it in the same way wrap it underneath, and then plug it in. So let's start by wrapping it underneath there. Set it gently in place. All right, ah, oh, come on. These wires are very stiff. It's giving me just a little bit of trouble. There we go. 
All right. Got it plugged in. Just want to make sure that those wires are tucked in enough that they're not going to interfere with closing this guy back up. Be... Yeah, that didn't get all the way under the PCB board. There we go. There we go. I just kind of snug them down under there a little bit. Let's put our screw back in for the logic board. All right, tighten her down, not too much tension. All right, and reattach the hard drive. So you can see the hard drive's got all this rubber padding on it. That's shock protection. So look at this. There you go, Toshiba disk drive. Made for Apple. That's kind of interesting. Huh. All right. So let's make sure that gets reattached well. Sometimes you got to kind of spin and flip these things in funny angles to really see what the heck you're doing. There we go. Now what I find kind of funny is there's this really big pad down here at the bottom by the plug. I guess they assumed that if you're going to drop your iPod, you're most likely to drop it that direction, so they gave it extra padding on that end. Kind of smart of them, actually. Because really, honestly, that is the way you're going to drop it. Oh, and look at that. The screen's already on. Wow. All right. Uh, you know what? And I was wrong. That's not for the screen. It's for the uh, headphone plug and charging port. Or, well, whatever kind of port that is. Weird. Apple and your proprietary stuff. Okay, that's back in. Make sure we're not going to pinch any wires. So as you close this guy back together, just kind of do a quick check. Make sure you're not going to pinch any wires. Make sure the hold switch is in the same position. So you want to make you don't want the uh, hold switch to break. So I can see based on where that guy was. Uh, this thing was off. So I wanted the or it was not on hold. <laughs> and and we have a working iPod. It's cool. Backlights and all. All right. All right, guys. I know this was a pretty quick, simple video, um, but you know the whole point of it was to show that even if you have closed device items, that doesn't mean that they're not user serviceable, provided that you're not you know the average user. If you're willing to bust out your tools spend your time doing your research and uh, understanding what it is that you're getting into before you start, you absolutely can replace the battery in your closed cell phone or iPod or other device uh, instead of having to just go buy a new one. So I hope this video was helpful and informative. If it was, uh, you know, go ahead and throw a like on it. Uh, you also click to subscribe. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more like it, you know, this would be, uh, you know, one of my how to type videos, but I also will be doing uh, audio oriented videos like audio production, um, you know, gaming videos, PC building videos, that kind of thing. So yeah, let me know what you think and, uh, in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.